They look when you say their name. Yeah, I'm like their mother. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. If I go there inside, all of them, they like to to jump on my back, to play with me. Yeah, we are good friends. Yeah. yeah. At the ranger's headquarters in eastern Congo, there is a gorilla orphanage. Andre Borma has been protecting the gorillas for almost 20 years. In 2007, we had gorilla massacre. The first uh, gorilla who was killed, it was Lakasi's mother. The biggest one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, after one month, we had a second baby, it was Ndeze. Maisha is another, the oldest gorilla. She is a boss. Baby gorillas fetch a huge price on the black market, and poachers have killed entire families to capture just one of them. Poaching had contributed to a dwindling population, which many feared could lead to extinction. How do you feel seeing them inside a, an enclosure like this? It's not good because they are not in the natural habitat. But we are providing our effort so that one day they can be like other gorillas in the forest. Virunga will be alive forever. Virunga is one of Africa's most biodiverse national parks, home to a quarter of the critically endangered mountain gorillas. The rangers here risk their lives to protect them. So I stumbled across a graveyard just like this 13 or 14 years ago. This is for rangers who have been killed, and back then one in seven rangers had been killed doing their job. I came back 10 years ago and actually put me through their whole training program and made me become a kind of honorary advanced force ranger. I got a green beret in the jacket, went out patrol with them. And back then it looked bleak. It looked like they were fighting a losing battle and that the hippos and gorillas we were seeing could be the last ones here because there were so many rebels and so few rangers and the world just wasn't paying attention. So I always wanted to come back to show what heroes these rangers are and they still face serious physical danger because there are still loads of armed groups within the park. Over 150 rangers have died protecting the park. Five more were killed by rebels just two weeks ago. But now the park itself is under threat. Illegal charcoal production, one of the rebels' main sources of income, has caused mass deforestation and presents a new threat to the wildlife here. Innocent Buranwe leads armed patrols looking for illegal charcoal producers. Controlé. Et s'il y aura des fours, on va les détruire. Il ne faut pas chuchoter, il ne faut pas parloter pour que les braconniers puissent nous entendre. Within a few kilometers of their base, the rangers hear the sound of the trees being chopped. By the sounds, yeah. there is some people who are cutting trees. So it means that they are cutting trees for just making uh, charcoal. escaped. You can see that uh, this place has been uh, invited by uh, poachers. You can hear some voices. That is the one who ran away. Then he's uh, warning his colleagues. They cut trees like that one. Then they start carrying. Then they come like here. And after one week, you'll find the charcoal has been formed. He's supposed to cut about uh, 50 trees. Charcoal is made by chopping down trees and slowly burning them in an easily assembled kiln. It's then transported out of the forest and sold to the nearly four million people who live around the park. For the rebels, it's a hugely lucrative business. Another kiln, and you can still smell the burning wood, so I think this is 
very recently used. This just shows how widespread it is, and this is right under the noses of the rangers. Big area's been cleared. Yeah, this place is uh, empty. So another kill. This may not look like much, but thousands of people are doing this across the park. Some people think the value of this trade is $35 million a year. So that gives you a sense of how much damage is being done. Charcoal production has destroyed at least 30,000 square kilometers of forest in Africa. To see the scope of this deforestation, we flew with the head of Virunga, a Belgian prince named Emmanuel de Moreau, who took over in 2008. Um, that's actually a known FDLR position. Now we're going to get to about 1,500 feet, and then we can fly over it. Out of shooting range? Yeah, it would be safer. You've got some charcoal burning just there. A big part of the problem isn't just the forest destruction. It's also the effect it has on stability and peace in the region. It's one of the main incentives to war. It's these illegal armed groups, these militias, that are essentially funded by the trafficking of um, illegally acquired natural resources, of which one of the most important is charcoal. And it's enough to supply over a million people um, with fuel. Um, and it's, it's a very, very complex problem because those people need fuel. You know, without it, they can't cook their food, um, but they need it for their health because they need to sterilize the water they drink. We can't deprive them of um, domestic fuel. It would create a, a humanitarian disaster. Emmanuel's solution is to completely reinvent the local economy. Central to this is the construction of eight hydroelectric plants that will provide cheap power to the entire population here using Virunga's own natural resources to end the deforestation that is causing such devastation. Virunga National Park can create between 100 and 120 megawatts. That's uh, 20 times what the whole city of Goma, a city of a million people, is getting at the moment. You know, with the electricity that can be generated from Virunga, we can create between 80 and 120,000 jobs in the province. Um, the Congolese military, uh, the UN peacekeeping force here, the biggest in the world, haven't been able to defeat the rebel groups militarily, but you think you could just make them choose to, to stop fighting because there's, there's, there's a better alternative for them? You know, they're here to make money. Until you provide an alternative, you're not going to resolve the conflict. But in the short term, you're removing um, a large source of income for those armed groups, so you're you're making some serious enemies. Um, well, you know, it's not a popularity contest. Um, that, that's true. That's an understatement. Emmanuel was shot four times immediately after filing a complaint against an oil company exploring the park. He was lucky to survive. So each one of these turbines will produce more electricity than the whole city of Goma is getting at the moment. So it really, is, it's a huge transformation for the area. Congo remains one of the most violent places on Earth, but there are real signs of progress here. Thanks to the efforts of the rangers, the long endangered species that live here could actually survive. At another park ranger headquarters, at Kahuzi Biega, I found the man who trained me 11 years ago, Eli Mundima. Ah! How are you? Good to see you again. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. took me out on patrol to see how the gorilla population has fared since I was last here. Mush it! You will see a gorilla life. Maybe. Let's continue. You promised last time and you kept your promise. <laughs> Eleven years ago, we found a lone silverback gorilla. This time, Ellie showed me something that would have been unimaginable back then. Babies keep on wanting to get closer and come in and say hello. The closer the babies get, the more uncomfortable the silverback gets. Come 
making eye contact, so I'm having to look away. Back in 2006, it looked like maybe the gorillas were finished. Maybe they would be gone in a few years' time. Because of training, they train rangers now. Those rangers who are well trained, they are protect gorillas. The number of gorillas is growing up, up, up. That's the reason why we meet this family, this big family. To see 12? Yeah, you've got, you've got them, I think. 12? Yeah, yeah, the whole family. Unbelievable. Yeah. It makes me want to be a ranger again. Of course. There were less than 700 mountain gorillas left in the world when I was here in 2006. Now, there are approximately a thousand. This progress is remarkable. And although the gorillas are still endangered, it looks for the first time in a long time as if there is a good chance it will continue. You can't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> you make to do, to make a wave. Good. Very good. Thank you.